And we're back in the room once again, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed, we are. Welcome once again to The Cayman Show. My guest today, he is a physiotherapist. He is a wrestling referee or a referee of wrestling, should I say. He is a thespian, an actor, if you will. He is my good friend coming to us today from down under, oh, so many miles away, oh, so many hours away, nine hours ahead of us, I believe, my friend and yours. I know him as Charlie Fat. You may know him as Peter Young. Peter, Charlie, what do I call you? I don't know. Whatever. Welcome to the show. It's absolutely lovely to see you. It is great to see you as well. And look, I, I came to the hall. That's where, fantastic. Where are you? I, I, told you fantastic. You. I told you I'd That's meet you here at the hall. What, is, is, is that where we put the ring? Is the ring still in, in his cupboard? That's, yes. That's, that does actually look like Kate's community hall where it all began you know back in the day it is that is a picture of the hall i is I it actually it that remember. is actually the hall is actually the hall. well it's, it's, uh, this is where exactly where i am no yeah. green screen this is real uh -huh. absolutely real. <laughs> so do you know what if you did google a picture of Kate's community hall and that is actually it then it's had a shitload of money spent on it since we used to work there you know Ah, oh, right, right. I, I recognize the colors vaguely in the roof. Yeah. And, uh, but I think that's where we put the back there is where we used to yes. shove the ring. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. would back be. There, yeah. yeah, that was a hellacious task. But also, if you remember, Pete, see where them double doors are now. They weren't there. There was a divide no. there. The uh, yeah. people used to, in the wrestling, go on top of, I've done it myself, and jump off and do some crazy move. I think, in fact, in one match, which we'll no doubt get into, it was Fergal De Witt versus Son of Abdullah. He actually went up on where the yellow wall is there right now, just by where there's like some speaker gimmick at the back there, on the left-hand side of people's screens where I'm looking. Um, yeah, that's it, yeah. Uh, he jumped off round about where the speaker was on to Son of Abdullah in that match. But uh, yeah, we'll get into that in a bit. But yeah, that building, if that is the same building, it is genuinely the same building, yeah? Yeah, yeah I, did, I did my research. Uh, this, is, this is the hall now. This is this building, everyone, is where <laughs> my entire wrestling career started and ended. Yeah, I suppose it is, isn't it? Yeah, because you didn't do any other shows elsewhere. It was just the Hamalot ones that we did there, yeah? yeah and some I training. Think, I, I, Towards the end, um, so folks, we're jumping ahead here. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's okay. uh, towards, towards the end of my stay in the UK, so we're talking about 2005, mm. uh, I think the internet was, you know, the internet was a thing. Yeah, it was and, taken and off then when everyone yeah, had there it. There was yeah. a profile. There was some website that was like UK wrestlers and referees that were available, and I think you yes. and I ended up on this thing. So towards the end of my stay, we, we, we started getting uh, – contacts for will you come and referee at our show and mm. i'm like oh well maybe and can i bring Cayman with me and all that sort of stuff i don't think we ever ended up doing it i think it ultimately would have cost us more money to yeah. drive yeah. across the country to perform at a show for 10 quid That's and then right. drive all the way back so I, I don't think we ever ended up doing it no we didn't i i did get a bit of work myself off it that website it didn't last long though that website it, it came and it went you know um ukworkers.net i believe the address was oh that's it maybe i'm still maybe there's an archive version there and there probably is somewhere charlie somewhere. fat available for five pounds a night and i'll do your refereeing something <laughs> fantastic like but let, let's go right back to the beginning then mate all right so uh obviously i had no idea you were in my hometown of merthyr tidville first of all i was running sessions from cardiff which is approximately 24 miles away from merthyr um how did you hear about the sessions first? Because it was at one of the NWA UK Hamlock sessions yeah. that you first came along, wasn't it? Um, talk us through your memory of how it all came about. Ooh, memory, that's a, that's a difficult thing. Tell uh, me about so it. 2001, I came to the UK in 2001 as a physio. Uh, worked in London uh, for about a year, Romford, Ilford, that sort of uh, zone four area mm. and then mm. uh, when it was time for a change I contacted the locum agency and they said would you like to go to this little town called Merthyr Tidville in, in South Wales and, and treat uh, old people at a day hospital or do you want to go to Glasgow and do women's health and All it right. was a pretty easy decision uh. for me <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to go to Scotland and do women's health so off I went to uh 
Mertha. And about a year later, I reckon, um, by that point, uh, my, my, my partner at the time decided to go back to Australia. I was on my own. It got a bit lonely. Mm. Uh, it was me and the, and the Sky TV. And um, I remember used, I used to go, I used to go to Tesco and, uh, and Asda after work just to see other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and around that time, that's when I, um, I saw an ad. I think it must've been an ad in the local paper. The, the, the Mirtha, the Mirtha paper came out once a week or something like yeah. that. Yeah. The Murtha Depress. <laughs> yes, yes. The Murtha Express, yeah, yeah. That's right. So I, I think I, there must have been an ad because I, I can't think of any other way I would have found it. I think I saw an ad saying we're having a training session, come along. Um, so I would have just gotten in the car, um, my shitty my shitty Ford, and uh, I would have driven to Cardiff. And, and I, 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 I remember walking in to the hall and uh, I was only wanting to check it out. I had mm. no intention of training. And I think that, that first session, I sort of just watched a bunch of unco people run around and yeah. do stuff on mats. There wasn't a ring. There, no, it was no, just no, 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 not at first. Floor. There wasn't. No. Yeah, a bit, a bit of chain wrestling, all that sort of stuff. And I think, I think at some point you came over and introduced yourself and said, "Oh, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to do some training?" And I'm like, "Oh no, I'm fine. I'll just, I'll just watch. This is fun. I've, you know, I, I, I'm a wrestling fan. I just want to watch." Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that, I think that's how it all started. I just rocked up to one of these training sessions and i must have given you my number or yeah. email address yeah. and um yeah after that i uh, i received a call to say do you do you want to come along and help us out as a referee is that is that is that how it happened this yeah pretty terrible. much right my memory of it is um you write the brother newspaper western mail and echo uh media wales that's that's the big one in charge of all those those titles in charge of the western mail and echo and the celtic titles um, such as the Merthyr Express, uh, Cannon Valley Leader, all those papers. Uh, they did a piece on the wrestling training coming to Cardiff. And in that piece, that press piece, was contact details. So you would have probably made contact there via email or, or whatnot then. And then uh, the times and everything were, were on there. So that's how you rocked up at the venue. Um, I think we were doing the training. I introduced myself to you then. Well, you were, I think you were sat at the back of the hall um, in an area which smelt of piss, uh, which, by the way, was most of that venue back in the day. <laughs> um, it, wasn't my, it wasn't mine, I don't think. <laughs> no, not, not on that occasion, no. <laughs> but, yeah, that venue was beaten up. It was, it was a, a hardcore venue, to say the least. But, yeah. yeah, I spoke to you, and then I was doing training. Andre Baker then was wandering around. God rest his soul, he's no longer with us. Uh, he was wandering around. I think you and he got talking then, and he came up and he said, he's a physiotherapist. He might get a great referee. And I was like, ah, yeah, he would. He said, ask him if he wants to do it for one of our shows. I was like, all right. And I know about a month later, because I got the venue for Andre to do the training in, because there was nothing in Wales, and I was traveling back and forth to Kent for the time, which is a pain in the ass, especially as at the time, as you know, I didn't have my driver's license, so I was reliant on buses and other people, which is a pain in the ass for them. Um, but yeah, he brought the training down to Cardiff then. Um, after a while, he was sort of training me to be a trainer then as well. So I got on, on that bandwagon. I started running the school in Cardiff then as well. But he wanted to do a show there, to cut a long story short. And he, we needed a referee. We thought, oh, we'll have a local referee, he thought. So that's where you came into it. So I phoned you then. Hey, how would you like to do the referee thing? I think I emailed you first. And just express, checked out if you had any interest. And you were like, oh, yeah, sounds good. I was like, yeah, so only a small show. Brilliant. So then we exchanged numbers. Then I called you. I remember, and I'll quote you in a moment as well. Oh, no. What did I say? It's, it's what nothing I bad. Nothing bad. But I remember. <laughs> I said, uh, yeah. Um, okay, just to tell you about it. The show is an NWA UK Hamlock show. Uh, that's the training that we do. Uh, there's going to be this going on, that going on. There's the wrestler. You're obviously familiar with Abdullah the Butcher. We've got a wrestler here, Drew Onyx, who portrays the son of Abdullah the Butcher. So he goes by the name of Son of Abdullah. He'll be doing a little bit of a anything goes kind of match at the end, and there'll be a, a rumble. It's only a small show. Oh, okay, how many is there? Uh, probably looking at about 
200, something like that. Holy shit, Carl, you said a small show. I remember. Do you remember that? <laughs> Do you remember? I, I think what you thought would be a small show would be like, I don't know, 50 people or something. Perhaps 50 people you. watching, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you wow. did. Do, Do you remember that? Does that ring any I, bells? I, 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 it doesn't surprise me. I remember, uh, uh, I think the wording, there might, might have been a difference in wording between what you said and what I heard, because what I heard was, would you like to come and referee a match or two? And ah, I'm thinking, right. Oh, great. Yeah. I, I don't really know what I'm doing. You know, I've watched a lot of wrestling, but I'm, I've never been trained to be, I mean, who's <laughs> trained to be, whatever. Um, and, uh, but I thought I'd be contributing, like there'd be a couple of referees. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. Um, I, I remember driving to the gig uh, and my friend James, who's from Australia and uh, a lifelong friend here in Australia, <laughs> yeah. he, 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 he was visiting me that weekend. And we were driving for the first show. I'm nervous as all hell. I didn't even have this shirt at that point. I only had a white sort of normal business shirt. <laughs> I remember shirt. it, yeah. I didn't even have a real shirt. I think it might have been a polo shirt. Something I'd Polo shirt it was, yeah. I yeah, remember yeah. it. Short I've sleeves. got a videotape of it somewhere. I'm never going to watch it again. I've got uh, a videotape, which I go back oh, to every no. time I need a giggle. <laughs> <laughs> but he, uh, I didn't have a name at that point because, I, you know, so, so it's actually my friend James that's responsible. Uh, I think we were sitting in the car because we got there early. Mm, I was going like, to ask where the name Charlie Fat came yeah, well, from. Well, from. well uh, and I'm like, I don't have a name, I'm going to have a name, got a name. And he said, how about Charlie Fat? It just came out of him from nowhere. Yeah. Now, yeah. The, the Charlie Fat thing is, it, it's possibly a lie, but I've had members of my family explain to me that... Uh, that Jeff Fat, who's the purple wiggle, you know, the wiggles? Mm, yes, I do. Yeah, so the, the Asian guy in the wiggles, yeah. he is yeah. my second cousin. Okay. So right, I've had okay. several people in my family say, oh, you know, you don't know him, he doesn't know you, but Jeff Fat from the You wiggles, will after this. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, I actually have run into him and mentioned what I thought was a family connection, mm. and he completely denied it. So it's possible that members of my family have been lying to me for many, many years. Mm. But, uh, you know, at that point, I thought that I was a relative, and so that's where the mm. fat came from. Uh, and I it's also possible. Charlie... It's also possible that he's just got hold of some videotape and he doesn't want anything to do with you whatsoever. <laughs> that's possible. I, I mean, he might see this talent and think, oh, yeah, <laughs> why didn't I get him to replace me? Um, well, exactly. Exactly, you know, stand right. in, you know. But uh, so that's where that's where the name came from. But I thought I was only going to referee uh, a match or two. Yeah. I if, if it, can I just say, if it was me that said that, that was my assumption as well. And if I'd said that, you're right. Obviously, I was just like the middleman between Hamilton yeah, yeah, promoter yeah. and the people of Wales, basically. Yeah. So I was like middleman in there, and it's just like, oh, ask him if he referee a couple of matches. So yeah. So uh, so how many uh, matches did I have to referee? Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. How about the whole, gonna go, the, the whole show? It was the whole show. I was gonna, I was gonna say about seven. Yeah. How about the whole show. Yeah. So, and and the right. first time, I think the first time I stepped into the ring was <laughs> ten minutes before the audience walked in, <laughs> and uh, I think the announcer, who wasn't Ash at the time, it was uh, an import from from Hammerlock. He's like magic. Oh. Magic yeah, was announcing at the time. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You just, just have to check behind their ears and uh, check check that they've got nothing hidden in their boots and just count it as if it's real. And look at the time I was new. Uh, I think Andre was 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 doing the kayfabe thing on me. And, you know, yeah. he, he was just like, oh, you don't need to know. You don't need to know what happens in the matches. Just just yeah. referee it straight. And I'm just He like, was old oh. school. He was. He was old school. Oh, yeah. man. I'm like, oh, no. And, and later on, once I had done more shows yeah uh, uh you know obviously i was a little bit more part of the process you were then and, yeah yeah you know, you know and and obviously it's it's a lot more fun knowing what's going to happen and and knowing you know the spots and all that sort of stuff yeah. that and first, i suppose that there's a lot show, less pressure than pete as well oh my god it was it was it was frightening you know being introduced and running out there and uh the people watching you and i'm thinking oh my god like i've performed before yeah but, yeah, I've never performed in this sort of thing. And they're all around me. Um, it was, and you know what? I didn't realize how hard the ring was. So you yeah. slap your hand and it, it, it's hard. It is. And you, yeah. You know, you know, the other thing I realized is, and I struggled with this my whole, my whole career as a referee, I struggled with this <laughs> is, is 
uh, what to say because obviously on television when you've got thousands and thousands of people in the ring uh, around the ring mm. you know the referee can move his mouth and say anything and and realistically the the, the audience is not no one's going to hear him no no that's but, it. but even with 200 people there are times where the audience is just happens to be dead quiet yeah i'm obviously wanting to say something to the wrestlers and you know what, what you know do you want to give up or whatever but you know, I, I, it's very hard to come up with meaningful <laughs> things to say as a referee. Besides, do you give up? Um, so I struggle with that because I just, I, I, what the hell? What am I, am I supposed to ask these people? You know, <laughs> I know, mate. I know. It's, I suppose you were literally given the old, the proverbial baptism of fire and thrown into the deep end. It was literally right. Here's the pool. In you go, in at the deep end, off, sink or swim. you go, yeah. And, you know, I, Andre... You was, swam, though, man. Uh, well, thank you. I, I mean, look, side note, I only found out a few years ago that Andre had passed. Um, oh, which, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Wikipedia told me, because I think one night I must have been Googling, you know, uh, NWA Hammerlock or yeah. w- whatever, just to see, you know, what happened to the promotion, all that sort mm. of stuff. And I, I you know, I, it was only years later that I found that, that he had passed, and that's... That's sad, but he he was a. I mean, to me, you probably had a different relationship with yeah. him to me. But to me, oh man, he was a scary guy. <laughs> he was a scary guy. But on the on the flip side of that, once you break past the ogre part of him, ogre, yeah, not yoga, yes. ogre. Yes. Um, yes. Once you once you break through that, there was a really lovely side to him as well, which I got to see. And I I understand not everyone got to see that, but I think because I was working closely with him in the training and everything and in the promoting of shows in Wales and everything, he dropped his barrier a bit for me and everything. You know, he'd he'd look after me, he'd buy me beers and things as well. So so when we were, like, we were doing the the two-day camp the one time, did you do that with us as well? Yeah. The weekend I did do camp. It. I did do it. Yeah, I did a weekend camp. Yeah. yeah. He brought me beers then and everything. He said, there you go, I'll get these. Yeah, these are on me and everything. You know, it was, it was a, there was a gentle side of him, which, which not everyone saw. But on the flip side, if you made him angry, he would let you know about it. And by uh, God, you'd want that over with as quickly as possible. It, yeah. it, I think it happened once with me and him. And I was like, oh, my God. I uh, I don't want this, you know, because he was a, he was a tough guy as well, you know, he was a legit yeah, yeah, yeah. tough man, and uh, uh, I, but yeah, I, I I agree, I did probably see a, a different side to him that that I got the tap yeah. into that, that you may not have. There, there was definitely one meeting that we all had as a group after uh, after training, and I remember having a debate with him in front of this big crowd of trainees, sort of talking about you know insurance, and you know, I just. Yeah, in my world, and you know, I, I realize now that you know everyone was just doing it because I loved it. No, no yeah. one's doing it thinking, oh my God, if I get hurt, I'm in trouble. And I I think I think there might have been someone had gotten hurt or something in the a previous show or whatever. Mm. I remember bringing up something like, hey, um, you know, I'm essentially performing for you for nothing. Mm. Uh, mm. if something actually happens to me, is there any type of insurance? And I remember he was just like no and i'm just like i can't believe like why would people choose to do this and i was very green i'm like why would people choose to do this if you know if i fall on my head that's it you know but um it turns out that look arguably he wasn't making any bloody money anyway so um you know no one was making a living putting on these shows no 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 there was no living there you know um they always say it's the promoter that makes the money but for those shows by the time he paid his roster um and paid for the hall and paid for transport because a lot of the wrestlers weren't locals most of them weren't locals you know mm. uh some were from ireland son of abdullah big name on the tour as well you know Can- you Canada, it. yeah that's right yeah um so yeah by the time he's paid for all them you're just paying really to put the name out there and put the show out there rather than anything else obviously you had public liability insurance and everything and uh, legal indemnity insurance uh for the panthers and everything but in yeah. wrestling, unfortunately, it's down to the wrestlers and the performers to pay for their own insurances, which, by the way, don't come cheap, you know, because I've checked yeah. over the years. <laughs> I checked, you know, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's seldom you find a wrestler 
who can afford to insure themselves. And if they do, they're not a very wealthy one then. Or they are a very wealthy one, I should say, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I, he was a scary guy. And, uh, you know, rest in peace, Andre. But, um, man, man, you were, uh, yeah, yeah. He was a, I, I was never going to cross that dude. Um, <laughs> no, I think, no, I think no, after the that. insurance running, I was never going to bring that, that topic. <laughs> nah, but like I, I said, yeah. I, saw, I saw a totally different side to him as well. But... I see the never cross this guy side as well, you know, and God rest his soul. He did a lot for me. He taught me a lot as well. And I'm forever thankful to the man for that. And I I can't thank him enough. Um, Let's talk about that first show then. So you you came down in the car. uh, You named yourself in the car on the way to the show. That's right. Yeah, Charlie. That's 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 where the name came in the car on the way. So you come to the show, you walk into the hall. What happens next? In your memory, what happens next? Uh, I th- well, I would I would have met Magic, uh, and he would have given me an extremely quick briefing <laughs> on how it was all going to go. <laughs> um, I I don't even I I can't. Even, I've got a feeling the Son of Abdullah match was was another show. I don't think it was that first. I don't think there were any major. Uh, you know, uh, imported talent on that first show. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think was, Son uh, of Abdullah but... was the second show that we did. I think what yeah. we did, we just had um, a lot of the Midlands boys down for this one instead. Because yep. I remember Ash announced Son of Abdullah and right. Ash wasn't on this first show. So you are right there. Yeah. 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 And I, I look, I, I look, I guess I, I under, I underestimated how much hard work it is, uh, you know, when you, you know, the, the rest, you know, the, the talent would have their match and then they'd leave. Charlie Fat is not going anywhere. Yeah. Charlie Fat having to wait uh, for the next match. And I'm like, I just want a drink. Uh, I think it, was, it must have been summertime in Cardiff. Because, yeah, it was. I think it was uh, about July yeah, and it was a hot the, July as well. It was the glare coming through the windows of that building, of this building, the, the, these windows. Uh, I just Those remember ones. it being... Very, very glary, very hot. Um, yeah, and I think I think that was the first. So I had a catchphrase as a referee. My catchphrase was very imaginative. Ready for this, folks? Go on. Uh, it was "I'm the ref. I'm the ref." So, so you know, when when when, when the talent would be like, oh, "Are you kidding me?" I'd be like, oh, "I'm the ref. I'm the ref." Because you know, what else are you going to say? So that that was my catchphrase. <laughs> what a great um, catchphrase! You should have patented what that. Else am I, what else? What else am I going to say? I'm the ref, and. Uh, you know, do you give up? Is that is that pretty <laughs> yeah, much what I have to say for myself? But yeah, I just remember it being a long, a long, long day. Uh, the show seemed to go on forever. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I'm thinking, surely they would have called someone else to do this job, not just no, just me. <laughs> but it was, you know, it was it was good fun, and, and and but it was very early on. I mean, that was the first time I'd come to the wrestling uh, after the training session, so yeah. I didn't really. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't barely knew you. No, no, no. Uh, well, so we didn't know that we were neighbours either at the time, did we? I didn't know you lived in Merthyr. You didn't know I lived in Merthyr. That came no, later. No, no, that all came later. So, but yeah, what, I, I mean, obviously I enjoyed it because I, I came back for more. Yeah. But I just remember this, the pressure of, I don't think I'm ready for this. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think they've underestimated, you know, what I know. And I think there was only, I, only, I remember there was one, count that i mucked up you know um yeah. someone went out someone so one of the guys uh the, the guys from the midlands went out of the ring and i think i i i i, I counted and then he he slipped back in and i the, the the i was meant to keep counting because the other guy was still out mm. of the ring and i stopped the count and started again which was a very awkward 10 seconds oh, let me yeah. Yeah. And you muck More it up. like an hour <laughs> Yeah, yeah, when the audience has already sat to a five count or a nine count, he rolls in the ring and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Oh, I meant to oh, count again. Another 10 <laughs> seconds. But yeah, I think, I think, it, I think it went well. And um, yeah, I, I don't think I was ever going to make a living doing this, but um, it, was, it was great, great fun. And, and eventually I, I did come to training. Yeah, I, I started yes, coming. Yes, that's right. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned a bit of train, uh, chain wrestling. And I, and I all the bumps and bumps everything, and all, all that sort of stuff, which I really enjoyed. Mm. And um, you know, obviously, I could put them to use later on in in later shows when it was time for you know Charlie Fat to, to yeah. pop it. 
to, <laughs> to, to, be, to be placed in the in the path of danger and uh, <laughs> That's right. to be taken out. Brilliant. So that was the first show. How did you feel after the first show? I remember the last thing that happened on that show was Stuart Bennett, a.k.a. Wade Barrett from the WWE, Are one of kidding? our trainees. I... Yeah, he won the Rumble. Okay, I thought I've only worked... See, I thought I've only worked with a couple of people that have made it big. You know, obviously you. Um, <laughs> big but, 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 you know, I, I knew that I'd worked with, with Finn. Um, yeah. But I, I think you told me only recently that I'd worked with Becky Lynch. I have no record. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I have no recollection of working with Wade Barrett. Um, well, let me, yeah, take, right. let me take you through it. Wade okay. Barrett, first of all, right? He won the Rumble. Stuart Bennett, right? He, the pinnacle, he used to call himself, yeah? The pinnacle. Yeah. He, he won the Rumble. Um, Becky Lynch was in a six-man mixed tag, yeah? yeah. Or six-person mixed tag. There was, yeah. uh, I can't remember, a couple of the Irish boys and Becky. Um, against a couple of the Midlands guys and Jetta, I want to say. And that's, yeah, that's where you work with Becky Lynch. I footage somewhere I can dig out for you. Um, and obviously, Fergal DeVitt, Finn Balor, you know, yeah. But I yeah. don't, I, yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, I, look, I wouldn't have known at the time. Oh, who would have known? Who would well, have known? No, not at the time, of course not. No, but uh, yeah, it's interesting to look back on. And uh, yeah, so uh, you raised Wade Barrett's hand in that first rumble. Oh, I'm going to have to dig out that video. I've got a video. This is in the days before camera phones. I know, stuff, man, so it is. Yeah, not, totally. I think there's some grainy video footage. Um, I certainly have my whole first show on video yeah. uh, somewhere, but I don't, I don't know about any subsequent shows. I don't have it myself. But yeah. um, well, I, I raised I, Wade Barrett's hand. That's amazing. You did, yeah, yeah. And you didn't know that till just now? Not at all. That's awesome. See, the Cayman Show, the show that keeps on giving. Oh, it is. Of Always. Course. Of course. Um, let's, let's talk about show two then. So after show one, so after show one, yeah, that happened anyway. How did you feel after you left that show? Did you think, oh, my God, I never want to do that again, honestly? Or did you think... That was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Did you think, oh, my God, I was the only freaking referee? What was yes. going through your mind? Or all thinking, those things and more? This, this, I was thinking this organisation is rather understaffed. Uh, they need a few more referees. No, I, th I think I just, I just, uh, I, I obviously had the rush by the end, a big rush, yeah. being in front of the audience, you know, ending on a rumble, um, you know. Um, being being in there with all these huge, I mean, so I'm not very tall, folks. Just so you know, I'm about 160 centimeters. So mm -hmm. you know, I make all wrestlers look mammoth. Yeah. Everybody, um, and I think that was probably I, it, Andre wasn't thinking he's a physio. Andre's thinking he's a short ass. That's that's what he would. <laughs> <doing. laughs> and, and and you know, uh, but yeah, I look, I I, I really I enjoyed it. Um, I think later on when I was more of the gang, you know, I, yeah. I, I you know, when I knew you and I knew all the guys training and I had a much better relationship with everyone. Of course, that was great fun because we it was, you know, we, we'd plan you and I when we were towards oh, always end, on road trips. Yeah, yeah. yeah all, we, always, be, I know it's planning. So, only from Merth of the car. It's like I call it a road trip, but still, it's, it's, you know, the best part of an hour in the car normally, you know, you know. Oh yeah, and towards the end, I helped out with planning the music and yeah, and you know, putting the music together. I think there was even one show you and I went off to a bulk buy shop and we bought because we, we couldn't get anyone to cater at these things. So you That's and I went right. off and bought we, we went off and bought chips and drinks and shit. And I think we, we both made 10 quid each at the end. Yeah, of the we night. went to macro, yeah. did we? We went to macro think, cash and carry. Did. Yeah, That's it. other cash and carries are also available. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, later on we were, you know, we were much more. I, I felt I was much more involved in 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 the in the running and the helping out and yeah, and, definitely. You know, I, I was part of the, you know, I felt I was part of the gang. And that first show, oh my god, you know, what what am I doing? What am I doing here? Who are these people? Who are these people I'm in the ring with? Mm. And mm. and and also what what the hell is the, who's going to win? I don't have a clue. Yeah, that's mad. That is, what, the, what, the, you what is didn't have ending? a clue who's going to win. Ending? What is the ending of this match? I don't know. Yeah, I guess yeah. I'm just going to have to find out as it goes. That's it. It's, it's like a shoot, like totally legit. It's just you are literally refereeing this, you know, literally. 
it was it was nuts and uh yeah no it was look i i at, at that time in my life you know it, it, like i said it was going to work you know i i i uh, i think later on i got involved um because it wasn't just wrestling that sort of uh, once i once i picked up my social life it was you guys and i got heavily involved with the coal stars mm. in Ab- air oh wow funny and story I some- actually i got there. roped into a show there a couple of years ago yeah as what did uh, you- uh oliver i was the doctor in oliver ah uh, you you were the doctor that's that that saves oliver and uh, finds his father or something. Is that, is um, that so, no, it's uh, just uh, the doctor who checks on him. That's all. It's uh, yeah, Doctor six, Doctor Grimwig, is it? Yeah, six. Well, you're six a lines. great deal better, are you not? Yeah, six yeah, lines, six, something like six that. Six lines in sec- second act. That's, That's great. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice easy one. Not too much to remember. Oh, so, uh, they're a great. They're a great outfit. They I, are. So I, you I'm, met Derek, yeah? Oh, Derek. Yes, yeah. Derek. Derek. Uh, I did two shows with them. Um, yeah. well, was Deb there as well? At the time, Deb, yes. she's about my yes. age. Yeah, yeah, yes. good friend of mine, Deb. I worked with Deb as well for, for a time. Yeah, that's a small sure, role. I did My Fair Lady. Yeah. I think I, I think I came in halfway through My Fair Lady. Uh, and again, add in the paper, Mirtha Express. Yeah. Does it for me every time. <laughs> um, and I just rocked up to a rehearsal and they're like, oh, great. And, you know, obviously in shows, you know, men are hard to find aren't they like trying to Definitely. find men yeah, yeah. To, to be on stage and sing and dance and I, I i could do all those sorts of things mm. that was kind of nice just to rock up and they didn't know me so they mm. had no idea that i could hold a tune and i could act and so it was kind of nice just to act dumb and mm-hmm. be in their show and then later on they're like oh what you can do this you can oh shit so then i did a pantomime with them which was the last thing that i did oh no you didn't oh oh yes oh <laughs> yes i did and derek <laughs> sorry derek had to go there <laughs> Derek was the dame in that show. That was <laughs> that was Robin Hood and the Babes in the Wood, and that would have been two thousand and five. And pretty a, a week or two after that show ended, I left the country for good. So that that, that oh, was the way. I, but yeah, I like credit to them. That great company, and I, great look, company. I don't know who's I don't know who's still hanging about. But um, well, Derek is know, still hanging about. Deb is still doing a lot of the stuff there as well. Um, I, I didn't really know many of the others. Julie as well. Was Julie there when you were there as well? Julie Julie Griffiths, is that correct? Right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, we're still we're still Facebook friends. So. There we go. There we yeah. go. Well, we must tag her in this later, all right? Because call oh, stars are going a good mention. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, they're all there. So, so uh, I, I'm not sure who else would still be there from your day. Uh, like I said, I only went and I did one show. But can I ask, behind the curtain, when the curtain closes at the end of the show, does this mean anything to you? Um, Great show, guys. Well done. Fantastic stuff. But tomorrow's going to be even better. Or was that just for Oliver? Did he used to say that, Derek? Uh, I don't remember that. Maybe maybe it oh, was great. for you. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> perhaps that's what it was. Yeah. yeah perhaps yeah. it was for me. Great show, guys. Great show. But K-Man, come on, sort your act out. Tomorrow's sure. going to be even better. Come on, kick up the arse to me. Yeah, that's what uh, it could have been. I, I remember for my time there... Um, Look, the rules have probably changed now, but at, at those in that at those in those years, you you could still smoke inside. Oh yeah, totally changed well, now. And so you know, we'd be rehearsing this. You know, children, mm. children practicing their dance routines for a pantomime, and the director and I forget the director's name. I have to dig it up. Lovely guy. I think it was a local hairdresser, but he'd just be chain smoking mm. in an enclosed space. Upstairs at that hall, mm-hmm. wherever they rehearsed in in Aberdeer, come there hall was it? That, that's it. Yeah, and we'd all we'd all be there practicing the children and young people, and, and he'd just be like smoking in there, and and you wouldn't even think about that. It's like another now. world now. Looking back at that, it is like another universe. That I couldn't think of anyone doing that now. You know, at no, all, anywhere. No, no. But um, okay, okay, I got a story. Do you remember me coming to wrestling practice? Dressed up as a Mormon. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I do remember it. I remember we strategically planned it for ages. Yes. I'm a little shady on the memory, but you were the brainchild behind it. Do you remember the exact story, how it came about and what happened? I I think this was in the days of uh, message boards, right? On the internet. Yes. Yeah, we had the... um, 
the wrestling forum. I think I'd launched the Celtic wrestling forum or something. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. So that, that's how we communicate. And I think somebody must have said something about religion, of course, because that's where you'd talk about religion on the wrestling forum. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I, I think you and I conspire that I would fake offence Yes, that's right. At, yeah, at it was our first rib, really, wasn't it? It was one of yeah, our first right. ribs. I would fake a fence, and 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 whoever it was, and I can't even remember who it was that we did it to, but I, I faked a fence. We played on it for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, well, probably not. We probably played on it for days. Yeah, it was about a week. Tri- I think it was. I yeah, think we played on it was- through the week until training day. Yeah, yeah, and I got apologies, and you know, and then just to prove a point, I went out and got. Uh, the equivalent of a Mormon <laughs> uniform, and, and I made a name badge. Uh, right. I got a black tie and my white collared shirt, <laughs> and um, I think I said something like, "I can't come to training until midday because yeah, I finished." I'm going to be late because doors. that's right. I'm going to be late. I've got to knock on some doors in Cardiff, and I remember walking into the that training <laughs> session, and whoever it was that had been probably so worried that they defended me. They, their face when I walked in. Oh my God! It's, it's was it, real. So, I do you remember who it was? Was it Eggly? No, 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 no. It wasn't Egg. It was uh, God. Ed Bailey, one of the young boys. I think it was Ed. Yes, I think it was Ed. That rings a bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't you have a book as well? Didn't you come in with a book as well? I, I, I would. I would have come with a good, good book or, or yeah, or a you good did book definitely placement. Brilliant but yeah, stuff. I just remember walking in and seeing faces drop like, oh, my, it's real. Yeah. He's re- he wasn't mucking about. He really was offended. He's a man of God. <laughs> that was brilliant, though. <laughs> the, 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 the lengths you went to with it as well, you know, you actually bought an outfit. You bought yourself a new wardrobe just to get in character. That's commitment. And this is why it I is. love you, you know. Oh, thank you. Um, another reason I love you, show number two. Ashley Cox was also on this show. Let's talk about this show. First of all, what's your memories of the raffle from hell? I I remember uh, <laughs> I, I I've seen uh, look in my days doing a lot of theater. I've seen a lot of inappropriate times to draw raffles. Um, you know, there's nothing there's nothing like a raffle to break the flow of a show. And um, this one in particular, uh, this one stopped the show dead, I recall. Yeah, got it on videotape, yeah. Oh, my God. It was probably Ash and I out there. It was. To- it oh was. My God. Do you know what? Can I just give my recollection of it yeah, from watching do. the videotape not so please long do. ago? Oh, um, <laughs> basically, basically, it's you and Ash, Ashley Cox. Shout out to you, sir. Ashley Cox, good guy. Um, it's you and Ash, neither of you, from your expressions, wanted to be any part of this raffle, okay? <laughs> neither of you wanted to be any part of this raffle that you've been asked by the promoter to do in the intermission. You mm-hmm. can see, you were both like fish out of water, right? You were great at refing. He was, he was great at his announcements and whatnot. But the, he had to, you had to draw a ticket, I believe, yeah? Hand it to Ash. Ash would then shout out what the prize was. This next one's for a box of uh, Cadbury's celebrations and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a wrestling show and people are winning a box of Cadbury's celebrations. I think the prizes just come from the corner shop around, around, the, around the side of the building, you know? Um, but you were both there. You were calling tickets out. No one was coming to claim the prizes. That's right. It was just like, oh, great. What the hell's <laughs> going on here? You know? But the looks on both your faces... If I could have took them looks and just stuck them in a frame and kept them opposite my bed every morning so I could wake up and just see those looks, I'd always wake up a happy man for the rest uh, of my life because it was fantastic. Talk that's very through, sad. Talk me through how you were feeling while you were picking them tickets out, mate. What was going through uh, the mind of Charlie Fat or Peter? I was, probably, I was probably wondering if it was a rib because it wouldn't <laughs> take much to give me a, you know, a bucket full of tickets with nothing on them. Yeah. And draw this stupid raffle. I, yeah, it was. Um, I don't. I can't remember if I was the drawer. I think Ash would have been the announcer, right? So Ash was announcing definitely. Yeah. yeah. So my my official duties as a you know as a keeper of the rules is to draw raffles. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it, it was probably a low low point. Um, <laughs> probably a low point in my career as a referee. Um, awkward, exceptionally awkward. It's yeah, probably almost as awkward as having to count eighteen seconds when the audience knew I didn't. <laughs> Oh, uh, so what, what else happened at that show? I'm I'm struggling with my memories. Of so this okay, at that show now we're gonna gonna move on to the to the, probably that's probably the lowest point of your career, um, possibly <laughs> possibly on to one of the highest now. Then all right, so the main event for that show, obviously, obviously, well, first of all, before we go there, you got to wrestle my first singles match, I believe it was on that show as well. It was it was either a gauntlet match where. In the gauntlet, I was up against Exodus and then quickly put to bed by Conscious, who got me up in like a ray. Do you remember him? He was in a big, like big white suit with blue con- contact lenses. Look, I th- I'm afraid the, 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 the raffle has erased my memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was this- that anyway. Conscious yeah, okay. said, pick me up, slam me down, and put me in a cross face, and I had to tap out. Do you remember that? Yeah, okay, I okay, even got okay. a you tapped out chant then. Um, ah. It was either that match or it was me and Rude Boy Peter J. Um, we had a good match. I remember that. It was nice. It was it flowed. Um, it was a good face versus heel. Uh, I can't remember which order they were though. Whether that was on right. show three or show two or vice versa. But you in show two then in the main event refereed Fergal Devitt, now known as Finn Balor in the WWE, versus Son of Abdullah, who was the headline act on that show. Talk us through how you felt about that. Because I got the impression then, if I may say, you were shit scared of Son of Abdullah. Uh, you know what? Um, he, he, I, I, I look, there was, uh, there was some controversy at some point, wasn't there, about uh, a first blood match. But I don't think, I think this was a later show, wasn't that it? Was there, later, that was later, that was, yeah. The paper got on board with, oh my God, they're going to have a first blood. And then yeah, we had the newspaper change. got involved. Um, yeah, we had to change the show a bit. Yeah, the newspaper got involved. And then local councillors got involved. And then the local MP even got involved. Great publicity. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, if they are watching, um, it's, if, if they're still about, it's a show, guys, come on. <laughs> and with the program, it's a show, you know. Yeah. We, you, you stick with your counselling, stick with your MPN or whatever we call it, yeah. and we'll stick doing what we do. All right, butt out, you assholes. Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, yeah, there was no, that. No, no, later no, on, but... of Abdullah, I, I remember, I remember being. Uh, look, I remember after the, the 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 match, he was an exceptionally nice guy. Yeah, exceptionally yeah. nice guy. Um, and so and so was Fergal. Before the match, I think he was half in character. Um, and Method they acted, took, if you will. Yeah, yeah. But then they took this match. I mean, there was, uh, there, there, there was. We, we weren't in the ring. We were half out of the ring. You know, half of the match was outside That's of the right. ring. That's right. Yeah. I remember the. Uh, I remember the big jump from the yeah. the barricade thing. Do you remember the chair uh, spot as well? I remember people being thrown. I think Fergal must have been thrown in to a bunch of chairs because yeah. we just had loose sort of school chairs That's right, that yeah. and uh, the audience was like, get, get out of the way, get out of the way. And off he went through some chairs. I remember it being a really good match. I remember there was a fork. That's right. Forward. That's the Abdullah gimmick. And it always had yeah, the yeah, fork. Yeah. Fork, fork to forward. Um, I don't believe there was any blading in that match, but I think there might've just been a little bit of a uh, little bit of blood from the old. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, and this one's uh this one's a scoop right here. Uh, Fergal did have a blade ready for it. Uh, but come the time when he went to the ring, because he said backstage after, he's sort of talking to Andre about it. He said, ah, oh, I lost my blade. So he lost <laughs> his blade, yeah. It, it'd come off his wrist tape or, or wherever he had it, somewhere in the match. So, yeah, maybe a, a little souvenir for some... Uh, some young kid. <laughs> of, course, of course, some kid, some could, some kid took it home to do. Yeah, some... yeah that's it. They wouldn't know what it was. It was only wrestling. only about that size. It would have been yeah, anyway, yeah, you know. But uh, of course, yeah, uh, but, yeah. But so there was meant, it was meant face. to be more bloody. Yeah, but but I think I think any any whatever my face was doing in that match was legit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, if I'm like, it was literally because I didn't know. He was going to come off that wall. Yeah, uh, I think I would have known the outcome, but I I wouldn't wouldn't have known 
how much you know i wouldn't have had an idea about the shenanigans not a clue about the shenanigans um but yeah it was what that was a fun match of course i didn't know i mean i knew who abdullah the butcher was yeah you know i remember being interested in was was uh you know was the gimmick legit like was this an official son of abdullah like a you know a licensed uh Mm. name or was he just stealing it um i mean he was a canadian right he was canadian he was yeah he he wasn't actually abdullah's son obviously but abdullah endorsed it endorsed it you know so uh Uh, yeah yeah. but i think he wrestled twice in that show didn't he once as juronix and once as no, Is that right? I don't think so. No, I think oh, okay. he, he came. He came back later as Drew Onyx, I believe. Ah, uh, okay. Because I knew he could be. He, he could be either. Yeah, that's right. One yeah. or the other. He came back yeah, as Drew Onyx, and he wrestled for me in Celtic as Drew Onyx. I'd, I would love to see that man. I have not, guys, watching this, except for seeing it once for real. I have not seen this since. So I. Oh, that's I would amazing. That. Well, I actually do have the videotape somewhere, and I should dig it out. I think it's in my parents' garage in a box somewhere now oh, um i will dig it out because i'd like to see that match and i'd like to see the raffle again just as a little treat for myself oh, thanks thanks <laughs> i look folks i am available for uh I, i'll put this shirt back on again for any any raffle drawings i am available <laughs> for hire if you need me uh but yeah these these tapes need to be digitized before they lost forever so definitely man definitely get, get them out of your, your get your parents garage and get, get them digitized because i will do you know, mate i'll, I'll fans, get them on the fans want to see this you that's know? it i'll get them on the youtube channel even if it's just the raffle that's worth it oh of course of course <laughs> all right so following um your wrestling refereeing over over here then uh did you when you did go back home did you ever ref any matches back home at all no, I never did. I, I made um, I made contact with some local companies because there's yeah. there is still there's still a, a lively underground. You know, it's it's still a thing here too. Yeah. I'm tell sure everyone thing- where exactly you are in Australia. By the oh, way. okay. So um, I, I live in a town called Orange, uh, which is in New South Wales, uh, and it's it's about three hours drive west of Sydney. Yeah. So obviously, when I when I came back uh, to Australia, this is where I ended up. There's no local like there's forty thousand people here. There mm-hmm. is no uh, local wrestling group here. So you know we're talking about Sydney based groups. So you know I, I did make contact, but you know three hour drive, you know to referee, it just it just didn't seem worth it. You know I mm-hmm. I initially made contact and spoke to some groups and. You know, I never never made it work. And, you know, I, I think like a lot of the things I did when I was over in the UK and, and later on traveling, it's never the same once you you change the people, you know. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I you know, I didn't I didn't love res- refereeing enough to insert myself into a group of people I didn't know. Yeah, and but start over the you know with friends. I'd love love to do it, but but if you know I didn't love it enough that oh I've got to go and do this with someone else. Mm. So I yeah, so the, the the shirt went into the cupboard and it's only come out, you know, 16 years later for a, for a run on your show. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it, well, it's <laughs> nice to see it again. And I'm glad you kept all of it. Is that the actual shirt as well? Or have you got a new this one? Is this is the shirt. That is I, the I shirt. I, I wore this from uh, show two onwards. Uh, cause you know, this is a legit looking, you know, yeah. I think I got it on eBay, you know, from the st- <laughs> some, some old basketball ref shirt or, or, or something like that. Um, do you remember a do you remember a, a battle royal or a rumble happening that went off script and and some of the performers uh, went off script and sort of they got eliminated and then decided to come back at the end of the show? I'm like, oh my god! I think I remember what you're talking about. Um, one of them is a, a very dear friend of mine now as well. Um, so I think what you're referring to was when Chris Recall and Ace Manfredo both went under the bottom rope and just stayed outside the ring for ages. Was uh, that a time? I think, I think it, there was a legitimate. There was. There was. It was at the end of one. It might have actually been the first show that ended in a rumble. Yeah, but I, but I, the, I certainly recall there being a match where uh, I think you were supposed to win, so you were supposed to go over. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, yeah. and then they, I they, went they over. I but threw. I I went out legitimately, I think. No, no, they kept going under the bottom rope, doing the bottom rope gimmick they did. Very new, very green, and just wanted to get themselves over. 
uh, we've all been there, you know. And Chris Reed, God bless him, he's a, a cracking wrestler now. Just made a comeback after about six years. Uh, he's back wow. with Welsh wrestling. He's doing a massive tour with them, and he's doing fantastic. So shout out Rico again. Uh, but yeah, what happened was um, they were trying to get over, going under the bottom rope all the time. Uh, they both had these red Adidas singlets on as well, which they'd only they hadn't planned on buying those uh, to match. But they both bought the same red Adidas singlet, and the, so they sort of worked as a tag team because of that in that match. Um, so they kept slipping out, coming back in, slipping out, coming back in, uh, working the outside of the ring. I didn't realize that they were still in the match sort of thing because it wasn't like a planned or a heavily scripted rumble. It was just like, right, you win at the end, job done. That's it. That was the script of it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I threw out, I believe it was Ed Ferris at the end. And then I was like, yes, I won sort of thing. And I genuinely thought I had by then. And then they That's come in then and... Yeah, they came in and attacking too. me. Yeah, yeah. They came in and I'm started attacking me. I thought, yeah, I just thought, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, but <laughs> Ed Ferris then just chucked Ace Man Fredo my way. I slung him out. And I remember I said to Chris Rico then, <laughs> I said, uh, get the fuck out. I said yeah. to him. And he said, sorry. And then I just threw him yeah, over. I, and I everything think, think, was cool again. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think we there might have been some words exchanged on the old internet forum the next day about uh, <laughs> professionalism and sticking to the script. But yes, I remember ringing for the bell, and then they just came out again. I'm like, oh man, don't yeah, guys, come on, we're done, we're That's done. Uh, we were all very green, man. We were all very green. It was all very new. Obviously, you know, we should have come up with more of a planned finish as well. Um, that way, that would never have happened. And you know, there's they hadn't. I, I don't think they'd ever had a match before either. That was their first time, I believe, in front of a no. live audience. So you know, you can't blame the boys for you know they were they were young, dumb, and full of cum sort of thing. You know, they just wanted to to get themselves over. So you can't blame them for that, really. It's uh, how's Egg? Do, do you still talk to Egg? I've not seen him for a number of years, mate. I don't think he's wrestling other, anymore. He's into his martial arts now. We're still friends on Facebook. Uh, but I've not seen him in person for a time. Because there, there was definitely, a, I think there was, was it that rumble that he was determined to clothesline me and he did? Was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he got announced and then ran out and then chased me, clotheslined me for no particular reason on the <laughs> floor and um, then went into the match. That, that was great fun. I don't know. There was some backstory that no, no one knew anything about. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I think because, you know, he was friends with us as well, wasn't he? Uh, I mean, I remember one time we went over his house and he was showing us all these little videos and that from the past and everything. Um, but yeah, he was mates with us as well. I think he just wanted to get you involved, really. That's all. And just do something like that. We had a good night out with him in Cardiff one night, I think, didn't we? I think we had a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think we had some eventful nights out in Cardiff. We stayed the one night in a big sleep, didn't we? Yeah, we did too. Yes. Yeah. Other hotels are also available. And we had a continental breakfast then, and we were absolutely dying. The next day, I bought off the cuff on a whim a digital camera from this random camera shop you took me to. Do you remember? I have no recollection of that whatsoever. Okay. Here's how it went. Um, I didn't even have a camera on my phone at this time, right? I was thinking I had a 3210, a Nokia 3210, other mobile phones also available. Um, and we went from the roof of the Big Sleep Hotel where the car was parked. You said, oh, I've just got to go here a second uh, to pick something up. And we went to some place. It was still in the borough of Cardiff, but outside the city centre. It was like a, a digital camera sort of shop. And okay. you picked something up there. I'm not sure if it was memory cards or something. And I saw a camera. I thought, oh, let's enter the world of digital now. And I, I bought it. You said, you don't want to buy that. You, you should buy this. No, I'm buying this. And you were trying to advise me against buying this camera. But my mind was, was made up, as, as Cayman does. And uh, I purchased this camera anyway. It was like 100 and odd quid, 150 quid for argument's sake. Then we went from there to Asda's in Merthyr Tidville, um, where I had to buy a memory card for it then which I did. And you needed oh, something from there as well. Yeah. I remember silly little things, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I miss Asda. I do miss Asda a lot. Um, we don't have, we've only just gotten Costco in Australia. So that's a new thing for us. Yeah. Yeah. A, big, a shop that sells everything is we just don't have that. You know, if, uh, if it's a supermarket, it sells food. Yeah. You know, we don't sell, it's not like Tesco where you can buy clothes 
and DVDs and CDs and, you know, and, and, and food at the same place. You know, we have separate stores for these things. Mm. So, uh, going to something like the, the, the Mirtha Asda, where you can buy petrol as well. And wow, you know, that, yeah. that, that blew my mind. But now it's, it's great, it's, man. Uh, well, Asda, talking about Asda, so, uh, you know, a great store if you go there yourself or you visit, but their online shopping experience, the online shopping experience I had, have you heard about I've it? Heard it. It yes, was absolutely I've, abysmal. Don't heard about the bag of chips. Don't shop with Asda online. I ordered about 50 quids worth of shopping. Not a great deal, granted, but one packet of frozen chips, which, by the way, wasn't even the packet that I'd ordered, turned up, and it was just a joke. And I'd stayed in, and my order was meant to come something like 5 o'clock in the evening. It finally arrived 8 o'clock in the evening, and I had nothing new. I'm the sort of guy living on my own, always out doing things. When my food runs out, that's when I order new shopping. That's when I order more food. Uh, it was absolutely abysmal, and I've never used them since, and I've never crossed their path since. Um, other stores are also available. Um, personally, I use them. <laughs> uh, yes, I did. I did see that. I, I look. I've been, I've been keeping in touch. I mean, you know, we, guys, guys on the internet, we we don't talk. This is the first time we've had. This is the first a, time we've had a conversation since you came back over. I think. Yeah, that's right. But we've certainly had little 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 conversations online yeah and so i'm well aware of the the chips incident i i'm well aware of the uh the painting you, you did very well with, well you kind of did but you know the yeah. janet street port and nudes yeah. yeah that's right and and obviously you know i've, I've bought a few uh k-man tunes from itunes uh you know as they've, as they've come so that one sale in australia ah that's you Oh, Wait. thank you. What, do you. what do you mean that one sale in Australia? I got hundreds of sales in Australia. <laughs> I don't believe you, but yes, great. <laughs> it's my story and I'm sticking to it. Oh, fair, fair enough. Uh, look, shall we talk about the end of Charlie Fat? The, you know, not many, not many people get to orchestrate their own demise. Let's go. Yeah, take, well, I take it away, man. I'll, I'll hand the mic to you now, so to speak. It's, well, it's 2005. I've decided to leave the UK. I was reluctant, but, you know, external pressures at the time were like, it's time to come home. I was gutted, I'll be honest. Yeah, I did. I didn't, you know, I just, yeah, I, did, I, I, I didn't really want to go, but it was, you know, it was just time. Yeah. And, and I was just finding some great friends with the Cole Stars um, and, you know, making some great friends such as you. And, you know, it wasn't just me at home. It wasn't me going to work for the NHS and then going home and watching Sky. Mm. There were other things. I had a busy social life. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was just, yeah, the the partner that I had at the time was back in Australia and, you know, I needed to go back home. Um, we're not together anymore, by the way. Um, but, yeah, so the time was coming for, for the, la the last show and, and so I got to orchestrate, well, how's Charlie Fat? You know, we, I think we came up with the idea of let's, Let's kill Charlie Fat. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, let's come up with a spot that Charlie Fat can get well and truly squashed, dead, dragged out of the ring, and, uh, you know, another ref has to come in to yeah. save the day. And Charlie Fat is never heard or seen again. And, and to this date, we've kept that story up. And I we had, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had friends. I had friends from Physio World that came to see my farewell show, and they thought I had been squashed dead. So I think, I think the move was. I can't remember who was in the match. Um, there is a cat visiting us. So um, hey, hello, uh, hello. I'm I'm I I am on a world class. <laughs> Did the cat just class. make a call? <laughs> yeah, the cat's just touching the keyboard. I'm on a world class. <laughs> Show here. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, anything goes, man. Anything goes. Everything goes. Uh, yeah. So I think we, we, we planned a spot where, uh, and obviously Andre had to approve it. Yeah. But we planned a spot where I think the good guy, oh, see, even the cat started a song. That's amazing. Oh, what a clever how, cat. How did he do that? That is so, sorry. It's all good, man. It's all good. It just adds to the drama. <laughs> the cat started a song. I never expected that. I walked on the keyboard and started a song. Uh, yeah, so I think the, the spot was uh, the the face. I don't even know who, who these people were now. 
But the, the face got up onto the, the top turnbuckle to do a crossbody on the bad guy. Mm. My mm. back, you know, I, I'm being into, you know, I'm having a conversation with the bad guy. I'm probably saying I'm the ref, something like that. Yeah. And then, uh, and I've got my back to the, the turnbuckle that the good guy's on. And then at the right time, uh, the, the heel basically uh, turned me around, put me in the way of the crossbody and got the hell out of there. So I copped the crossbody. Mm. Did and, it hurt? Uh, no, no. Because, you know, I, I, I knew how to, I knew yeah. how to fall back. I think I sold the hell out of it. Like I flipped up and mm. yeah. And you know what? This I think this is one of these videos that has been lost because I, I know it was filmed. I've seen it once because you had a copy of it. I but probably still got it somewhere then. I don't know. I don't, I've got a feeling you might have taped over it, but um, I've not seen that match. But I remember the crowd going, ooh. Mm. And I might have continued my role. I don't know whether I had I stayed dead in the ring and then got pushed out onto the floor and then dragged away. But I, I made sure that I did not come back Excellent. until the, the show was over. Everyone had left except my friends from physio who were waiting for me. And ta-da, I wasn't dead. I'm but, okay. Um, I'm alive, man. I'm alive. To, you know, I don't think you often get to decide <laughs> how you're going to go out. Nah, so that's nice. That was nice for you then. Yeah, that was the right ending, a fitting ending. It was, it was. Because, you know, I mean, refs don't really have careers, do they? They don't, it's not, it's not like Vince McMahon was going to call up and say, I, you know, Andre Baker says you're really short. Come on, come and work. <laughs> so it was never going to be like that. But, you know, I, I, I regret that we didn't get in the car and go driving around and doing some shows. But then I don't, I don't know who these people were. I don't know if they were any good. I don't know if they were just idiots that were just, putting on a wrestling show and mm. you know, I, I have no idea what would have happened if we'd, you know, driven, driven off to England to do, do, I, I, I mean, I would have liked to go to Ireland and, and do some shows. Yeah. I did some over there. I did some Irish whip shows, uh, many Irish whip shows. In fact, I was uh, quite regular over there. Around. I think I've had stuck around. Uh, maybe if you'd but, stuck yeah. around, we definitely would have done more because I think it was 2006 or maybe 2005. I started Celtic wrestling my own promotion, which we'd talked about before doing. And I think the wheels were in motion just before you went. And then just as you went, I started it. So we would have definitely done more, 100%, and gone other places, yeah. Yeah, because the hammerlock thing sort of ended after a while, didn't it? You, you, yeah. You... I started getting local bookings as well then. And uh, so I just, you know, I didn't want to do the training anymore because it was taken up every Sunday then and all that. And it was just like, all right. So I handed that back and I think Ed took it over then for a time. And yeah, I just started doing my own thing instead then, you know, but which, you know, was great. It was one of the best things I've ever done. And I've done it for five years. Um, and then again, same thing happens. You burn out, you feel the pressure and it's like, right, okay, time to take a step back now. So, but I am making a comeback again now on the 28th of this month, pro wrestling carnage, Penkoy community hall. Uh, the first mutation. So yeah. Oh, do you need a ref? Uh, yeah, you coming over? No. <laughs> I'll have my own personal referee. We'll bring I you out do, one day. I only do raffles now. I don't. Ah I don't, I don't... man, that's cool. Well, perhaps they'll have a raffle. Um, but yeah. So would you ever go back to it? Think. Say uh, you came over to the UK. There happened to be a show. Oh, I happened to be on it. Of yeah. Of course. I'm not coming to Merthyr, uh, and I must say. All the David Hasselhoff stuff happened after I'd left. That's not fair. <laughs> I, I would have loved to have been around for the, for the, for the, uh, for the David Hasselhoff stuff. You know, <laughs> um, that, that's, did, did you know her? Uh, no, not personally, but my girlfriend's sister worked with her, so she knows her, and they're in touch. Are they still together? I don't even. Yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Still together. <laughs> I'm trying to get David on this show as well, but uh, he's a very busy man at the moment. He's just got an album out as well, so uh, I obviously. I haven't bought it yet, but I shall be purchasing it for the car. And uh, right. yeah, check it out. He's got a website. Right. Uh, I, look, I, I, I think the, the wrestling thing, you know what? People, when I say that I did this, people don't necessarily believe me yeah. because it's, it was pre, pre-Facebook and pre, you know, we had the internet, but it was very primitive. Really. Yeah, the internet was just becoming a thing for everyone then, wasn't it? I, I don't think one, everyone had it. I've got one photo of me. I, I think the the paper, the Merthyr Express, did a story That's on me. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one, there's one. There's one picture of me doing this. That's right. And that is the only proof that I ever have of this career. Besides oh, wow. a, one videotape, 
I, you know, it was kind of, yeah, none of this stuff. I don't, I don't have any great proof that any of this happened. Mm. Brilliant though, but it, it did happen and it, it was fantastic. And I've got very fond memories of it. You know, it's wrestling that, that brought us together and we did, uh, you know, I hope you agree with me anyway, we did become really good friends, really close friends because oh, of I, that, you know? And I would love to come back and, and you know, I came back, came back a few years later uh, with a different partner and um, but I think I think at that time I wasn't having a great time in my life around that time yeah. so I wasn't in the best frame of mind when I visited last time but um, this time around I would love love to come and visit again and always I, welcome know, I, I pined you know you know I really really missed well for a long time probably 10 for at least 10 years after I left yeah if you had asked me where home was I would have said Wales seriously I would have said Spring Street Dallas. Spring <laughs> Street <laughs> Dallas. CF 47 9 something something. Nearly there. Um, I, I would have said that that was my home. And you know, I don't feel that way anymore. But for a very long time, there was this lingering feeling that I'd left my home and yeah. I needed to get back to my home. And obviously, when I came back, you know, things everyone had moved on and you know, it was it was different. And, and then that sort of then reinforce that notion of actually it's it's not home. Mm. But, well, it um, always is as far as I'm concerned for you, man. Oh, so my home is your I'd, home. I'd love to come back, play some uh, Castle Bingo. Other bingo is available. Uh, you know, eat some uh, eat some uh, place and chips, and um, you know, have a good time in Wales again. I miss. I I can't even remember the names of the pubs in the town anymore. Like we. Used, you used to do that pub crawl from the top and work your way down. And that's right. Well, you've yeah. got the, the Vulcan, the Express. Oh. You remember the Vulcan, yeah? Oh my god, is it still there? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. It's still it's still wow. kicking. Um, what else you got? You got the Bellevue. Um, you've got the Wyndham, you've got yes. the, the venue, you've got the crown down the bottom. You've now got a Welsh bar that wasn't there when you were there. Um <laughs> I think that's about it. Wait, there might be one or two others there. Eh? Hardy's is there now. That wasn't there. Was it the Vulcan, the one that you'd end up dancing at late at night? That was. That the, the was. Night. No, you're thinking of Coolers. Okay. I haven't heard of that for a lot. That yeah. Been, Coolers over happened. the other side of town. You had the Three Or Shoes, which is now the Celtic bar. And then next door to that, you had Coolers. Wow. Wow. What a. Uh, many a night yeah. was spent. Drinking Carlsberg and dancing to shit music. Uh, yeah. I think I think I spent a New Year's Eve. I spent a New Year's Eve at Coolers, uh, listening to a uh, Robbie Williams impersonator, uh, counting in the New Year. So fantastic! Yes, that, Doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't. I would I would love I would love to come back and have a look. But yeah, if there's a show on, of course. Actually, I should say. I mean, I, I've not gone by the name Charlie Fat. Uh, until recently again like it's been years that i've not used it mm. I, i've just started uh i guess djing is is the word i've, I've started uh presenting a music show on yeah on fantastic Wednesday. give it a plug radio. man yeah yeah well so i i i, I uh, broadcast with an outfit called slice radio.com s-l-i-c-e radio.com and uh, i present a show every day well it's pre-recorded uh, and the show is called Sounds Like Teen Spirit. And it is a 90s alternative music oh, awesome. uh, show. So I do an hour every day. And, and I needed to come up with a name for my show because I didn't really want to do it as Pete Young. Mm. And so only recently, Charlie Fat has come back out. From, That's amazing uh, that he's come back out. He's come back out. So now, now the show is Sounds Like Teen Spirit with Charlie Fat. Uh, on Slice Radio, and it's available via uh, Apple Podcasts. So you can hear me rabbiting on about 90s uh, alternative music. And I, I believe uh, you and I are going to do an episode soon about... Definitely, um, man. Yeah, just uh, just let me know when we're going to do it. We'll uh, we'll talk after this and we'll uh, pencil something in, 100%. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, so Charlie Fat Lives on uh, Slice Radio presenting 90s music. That's uh, incredible. So turns out he wasn't killed uh, in I'm that I'm so accident. pleased. Yeah, yeah. What, I'm so what pleased. A, Secretly, right between you and I, I knew all along he wasn't really killed, though. You know. Ah, really? I'm well, one of the insiders. Oh, really? One of one of the dirt sheets, probably. Yeah, knew. man. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, we kayfabed it. It was all good. Of um, hey, is, is Murthy your? 
I, I, Merthyr was for me a very special place for you know a, a particular amount of time. Is is Merthyr going to be where you, where you're buried as well? What, what do you reckon? I don't know. I don't know is my honest answer. I've, my heart has a very strong link to Cyprus as well. Um, ah. I've always loved this since I was a kid. I've been going out there um, since the divorce a couple of years ago. I've been going out there. I've made some good friends out there. Shout out Richard and the Tipsy Turtle. Um, so, you know, I've stayed with him a few times. Uh, we've done dive trips then to Egypt and everything. I'm a rescue scuba diver now as well. I don't know if you were aware. Oh, wow, no, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, yeah, I've done all my dive calls. Um, so I kind of, I've got quite attached to Cyprus. I was before I got with my partner now, I was looking to move there and before Brexit, obviously, because that's complicated things now. And I was pretty close. I was about that close to actually up in sticks and moving there. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll get buried in Merthyr. Maybe I'll get buried in Cyprus. Maybe I'll just strap my ashes to a rocket and shoot myself to the moon. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> some place up there called planet cayman of course well you know i i'm gonna get buried in the uh community hall here in cathays hey one. fantastic well it looks put a lot put me in the cupboard with a wrestling ring just with about. the ring yeah oh god we'll be we'll have an easier job getting you in there than we did that poxy ring for crying out loud uh, i remember you telling me this ring used to be on tv and i'm like yes but it was 20 years ago <laughs> this it was, ring was on world of sport this, this is a really famous ring i'm like Mm, looks a back in bit. the day yeah well i'll tell you a quick story about that ring before we wrap up all right so basically that ring it was a world old, we believe it was an old world of sport ring it was also used then in a television show called transatlantic wrestling challenge in the late 90s and that's the canvas that we had if you remember with all the mm. the graphic on and everything um following that we used it for hammerlock obviously i bought that ring then myself then I, that became the Celtic wrestling ring. And in Celtic wrestling, I'm not sure if you're aware, if you followed any of it or, or what online, but in Celtic wrestling, we had a gentleman, a friend of mine by the name of Spam. I asked Spam, shout out. Um, and he'd always bring his welder with him because every show, the ring would break, something would fly off it. And one time we had wrestlers wrestling in the ring while Spam was welding the ring on the outside, you know? <laughs> Health and safety would have had a field day, especially now, but you'd never get away with it now. You know, it was like 10, is 15 that, is, years is ago. Ring, is the ring still alive somewhere? I do not know. I sold the ring to a gentleman by the name of Johnny Body, a.k.a. Johnny Rose. Um, I've not seen it for about eight years, so I do not know. It's not in this cupboard. It's not in that cupboard anymore, man. No. And them cupboards have been upgraded as well. That paint job back in the day was not blue, by the way. Some of the walls were, but the ones at the back there was all red with graffiti all over it, if I remember there was, rightly. There was a mural, there was a mural up there, wasn't there? Something that's like that. Right. Something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, that's sad because that ring, look, the ring, guys, it, it it was um it was a character of its own, this ring, wasn't it? I, it was I used, to, I used to hate putting the ring together. Um, but yeah, we it, all did. Yeah, it, it's it's like it. it you know, you, you know when you want to repaint something, you should take the old paint off before you paint. Yeah, it's uh, not what happened with this ring. Uh, basically, <laughs> you just kept painting the ring and painting the ring and painting the ring, and so when paint flakes were coming off it, it they were thick. Yes, uh, the ropes hadn't been taped. Almost forever. foreign object thick. That's that's right. It was crazy, but it it was our it was our home. But oh my god, that ring was, yeah. I want I want it's it's out there somewhere. It's out. It's, maybe it's, like it's probably still out there somewhere. Yeah, but I, I don't know where. Uh, but yeah, it was a good ring. Lots of memories for me in that ring. Many memories. I bled like hell in our ring as well over the years. Um, but no, it was good. It was a good good bumping ring though, from what I remember. If you hit that middle spot of that ring, you had a nice clean soft bump in there on the outside it was hard as hell but the middle part was nice you look i think i i have a little bit of regret uh that i wasn't around for sort of the glory days of you know your run i think i was there from the beginning yeah that's right i would have loved to have been in the van with you uh all that time so i do i do regret i would have loved to have been around in those days because we would have been thick as thieves absolutely you know, Doing all these shows and you know, obviously then the ref. But um, did you did you ever who did you re, did Ash replace who replaced Charlie Fat once he was dead? 
Um, I think Ash started refing for NWA when we were there, and we took him over as the referee for Hamelock. Uh, sorry, for Celtic then as well. Right. So he was the main ref there first. Then a few of the trainees then came up as referees and whatnot as well for Celtic wrestling. So so we did have about three referees at one point there then as well. Oh. Uh, but, you know, you can't... I mean, I'm the original. Come on, let's, let's face oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Like, the, the one and only, the best, and Cayman's favourite referee. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're what, welcome. What do, you ever, do, you ever, do you ever hear from Nafitz? What happened to Nafitz? Nafitz is uh, still about... He's not involved in the wrestling world anymore. Um, we did debut him on a Celtic show, though, um, as a parody called Nafberg. Nafberg. Yeah, wow. where we had him. We had Daniel as well, who always used to um used to train with him. You remember little Daniel? I there don't. Three of them. They used to help with the ring. There was the two Daniels. Uh, well, one was Danny, one was Daniel, one was Nafet. Uh basically we had <laughs> Daniel at the he wrestles now as uh, dangerous Danny Owens, all right. Uh okay. we had him, I had him dress up as Carlito. You had the darken up his face and everything, wear a big Afro wig, go to the <laughs> ring with an apple and everything as well. Uh, Nafetz was Nafberg, so we had a pair of black swimming trunks, and that was all, really. And yep. We had Danny then. He'd ordered a mask off eBay. He was going to do a Rey Mysterio gimmick. He had 619 sewed onto his trousers. His mask hadn't turned up, so I drew a mask on his face, a wrestling mask. So these three misfits had to come out and do like a little run-in sort of thing, interrupt the match, and then they just got their asses handed to them because uh, uh-huh. they all lived in Kefili, and this was a show in Kefili, so it was uh, their home crowd. Uh, well, that's a joke. About 20 people turned up to that show. Yeah. We, we labelled it the Kefili disaster uh, right, for right. obvious reasons. But yeah, they came out, got their asses handed to them and buggered off. That's all I believe the Nafets did in wrestling, yeah. uh, which is a shame because he was passionate back in the day and he was strong as well and he was tall. He could have been good, but you never know. He's still only young, you know. He's, still only... Well, we, we, he's probably 50 now. Um, <laughs> we, we, we used to train. Sometimes we'd end training with like a just an impromptu rumble. That's and right, often, yeah. And, and you'd pick who got to win. And so yeah. everyone would practice their wrestling, but also practice eliminating themselves in a way so the right person it often be quite amusing to make sure that Nafitz was the one that was that was going to win even though there was no good reason at all that he he would have won I remember fondly a uh, a sleepover uh weekend training camp where all the trainees all these kids yeah. ended up sleeping at my house because the plan <laughs> was to sleep in the hall it was freezing cold uh, all the trainers. I still off. slept in the hall. Oh, I don't think you were at that one then, because I remember taking Nafitz and a few of the other guys home. These were all kids. Yeah, I and- think I think you went home. I think I stayed at the hall with Andre and a couple of the older guys. Yeah, but I t- I took all these kids back because I had heat and like something on the floor because I just remember it being not particularly well organized, and these kids were like, you know, so young and. Mm. Uh, you know, I, we had mobile phones then, but it wasn't like we had now where you could just text and say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But these these kids uh, weren't particularly well prepared to sleep on a hard floor. <laughs> I'd say. I them all in my car and took them back to Merthyr and fed them. And then we went back the next day. There was also a chick that was training. She was really young and I can't remember her name either. Okay, but, um, she, yes, yes. That's right. So I remember dropping. I used to have to drop her home after, after practice because uh, I don't know. Because how else was she going to get home? She lived in Merthyr as well, didn't she? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's probably why. Look, I, I have great memories of Wales. I have great memories of uh, Hamelock and all my time there. So it's been it's been really nice uh, going uh, down a memory lane. Apologies if none of your audience gives a shit about this. No, 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 man. Uh, it's great. It's been, been really great to revisit this time and you know i'd love i'd love to see those videos Uh, i shall dig them out sir i shall dig them out i'd love to come back and 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 spend some more time with you and well you make sure you do man you've got an open invitation you know that and uh yeah wander up and down the main street of uh merthyr i oh god i yeah 
I didn't have a washing machine. I used to have to get my clothes washed at you know some shop in the main Cotton's street. Cotton's laundrette, I remember. Yeah, that's right. Um, what else was down there? There was a there was a uh, there was music shop. Was there? Yeah, just there next, was... just down from the laundrette. Uh, there was a, there was a Woolworths that closed. Yes, that's right. Uh, Tesco got the renovation when I was there, so it had the upstairs section. That that yeah. was a big deal. Um, yeah, look, I, look, I'd love, I, I'd love to come back. I'm sure you know people won't know who the hell I am, but I, you know, I spent a lot of time. I, you know, before I had internet in my house, I used to go to the library every day because mm. you know, obviously, I'm my family and friends are in Australia and the only way I had to communicate with them was, you know, Yahoo mail. And, you know, every afternoon I'd walk out of work and wander down to the uh, local library and log in because I didn't have internet at the mm. home. Um, so yeah, I, I, I miss, I, I really miss um, that area. Uh, we used to drive halfway to Cardiff to the cinema, didn't we? There was. Yeah, that's the, right. Nantgaru. Yes, that's right. We used to go there. Uh, I saw a lot of, con- I don't know if you and I went to any gigs at the arena in Cardiff, but I certainly remember going with friends from uh, the Coal Stars to see mm. the darkness. And uh, I think, I think I saw Madness and Oasis and, and Ash and uh, saw some bands there. Um, yeah. I, I just, yeah, I, it, look, it was a golden, it was a golden age for me and I'd, I'd love to relive all that. And it's been great talking about it. It's been fantastic. In closing then, mate, right? In closing, um, I'd like you to give me, looking back at your refereeing or your experience in, in wrestling and your experience in Wales as a whole, all right? I'd like you to give me just a, a, little, a little snippet of, of how you would describe that time. It can be one word, it can be a sentence, whatever. Ooh put you on the spot now haven't i no 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 seriously uh it's not true now but honestly home the word home is still i still associate in some emotional sense with mirtha i don't know what it is you know far out the snow and the salt on the roads and god you know things like topping up a gas card like we don't do that in australia Mm. you get an account and you you pay your account every month but the idea of going up the street to the corner shop and putting two quid on a card so your electricity would work. All that stuff, all those quirks (laughs) that, you know, probably day-to-day stuff for you. I don't know if that's still a thing, but, um, you know, I just, yeah, there's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very special time to me because I would, you know, for the majority of it, it was just me. No one else remembers any of these things, you know, in terms of the friends that I've got here now. Mm. So uh, yeah, home, South Wales, um, yeah, I, 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 there's something about it that I, I, you know, I still miss, I still miss Wales. I miss Cardiff. I used to watch Doctor Who and get homesick. Would you believe? Yeah, I would I believe actually a lot of that. The, the, the new episodes of Doctor Who and I'd be like, oh yeah. my God. A lot of it is filmed in Merthyr as well. Yeah. I, yeah. So yeah, I think home, home, I miss it. Um, and I, I can't, I can't wait to come back. I can't wait to come back and go to coolers with you and dance to some dodgy, shit music god i mean the, the years that we were there were sort of around that you know uh man i feel like a woman sort of time yeah so it was r- roughly around there you could not go to a nightclub without hearing man i feel like a woman and um you know any it, 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 it don't impress that don't impress me much i just remember that's right that, yeah, those, yeah. yeah in, in particular those songs were big and you couldn't go out without having to dance mm. to uh one of those crappy songs um yeah, and you know we'd end up having a kebab in that the chicken shop or whatever up at the top of the street there. Yeah, look, I oh wow, what a, what a great what a great wander down memory lane this has been. And yeah, um, I can't I can't wait to visit guys. Can't wait to visit. Can't Wales. wait to and have look, you over, mate. Can't yeah, wait it's to all the best. Your show your show's going. Um, your show's got got such a great audience, and you've got such great guests. And I hope I I, I hope I'm I'm I've I've proven to be just a, a fraction of as interesting as as some of the big names you've had on the show. You certainly have been, mate, and then some, to be honest. It's been fantastic. So uh, uh, I thank you so much for coming on, mate. It's been a, a genuine pleasure talking to you. My old wrestling referee, Charlie Fat, my old friend, Peter Young. I'm the ref. Uh, I'm the ref. I'm the ref. <laughs> I'm the ref. You can find me in uh, Kaze's uh, community centre hall 
24-7. That's where I live now. <laughs> that's where you live now. Brilliant. But it never <laughs> looked like that in our day. This is oh, yeah, yeah. they posh it up now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I cleaned it up. I cleaned oh, it good up. man, good man. That's that's what you've been doing all this time. Of yeah. just cleaning, <laughs> cleaning I, the venue. Paint, <laughs> painted the center up. Yeah, took you 16 years to do that. <laughs> fantastic hey. peter it's been a genuine pleasure my friend um thanks so much for coming on we will keep in touch uh i'm gonna come on your show as well fantastic i can't wait uh look after yourself thanks for coming on remember ladies and gentlemen girls and boys he's the ref, I, the ref. like comment subscribe you never know who or what is coming next <laughs>